Hey guys, so today I am going to talk about investing in kind of random cards and whether or not you should do it. Now there are a big free and there is a hierarchy in trading card investment. It goes without like a specific order, right? You can make the argument Magic Vintage is better than Magic than Pokemon Vintage. You make the argument Pokemon boxes or Vintage boxes are better than Magic Vintage boxes. You can make a lot of different arguments where... Pokemon and Magic are, but most people would say Pokemon Magic 1 and 2. Some type of order in terms of investability. And then I would say most people would agree that Yu-Gi-Oh! would be number 3. All, what do these games have in common? They have done very well for over the, Magic is over 30 years. They had the 30 year anniversary. Pokemon had the 25th celebration and Yu-Gi-Oh! also had a 25th celebration. So the commonality is they have big fan bases, they have a game that you can play, they have various IPs that they use, you know, Pokemon is great. On the IP front, Magic, not so much, Yu-Gi-Oh! probably better than even Magic in the IP front, because they have a cartoon, they have some video games, and they even had like this uh, Dungeon Dice thing I really enjoyed. But when we talk about and really kind of focus on Disney Lorcana, great IP, but is it over 25 years old? No, I'm talking about the big three in terms of their length, their player base, their tournaments, who's going to show up, and so on. So Disney has great IP. Uh, you can even argue Disney's IP is better than Magic and even bigger than Pokemon. You can make that argument. But the card game is new, and they're still working out uh, reprints. They're still working out, you know, when uh, Elsa was a $1,000 $1, card easily. And that's, you know, that shouldn't surprise anyone. It was a very popular card, and now that card has fallen to $700, $800 and, and still declining. The reprints have been devastating, and... It's, it's a new card game. It will have struggles. It will have difficulties. It's going to have growing pains that Magic did have. You're not always going to go to the moon. You're not always going to do really, really well. There are There's the possibility that it could go down. There's the possibility that it is not what you think it is as an investment opportunity. So that's Disney and Lokana. Uh, One Piece, again, great IP, but the card game is Bandai. And if you know anything about Bandai, they love tanking their card games, be it Dragon Ball Z, be it Digimon. They don't have like the best history of, uh, I would say, um, yeah, they don't have the best history of running their own card games. And then lastly, MetaZoo. MetaZoo is kind of where you don't want to be where MetaZoo is. And bankruptcy court fighting for every little so if you do invest i would say invest only in magic and pokemon and if you really love Yu-Gi-Oh, maybe look at Yu-Gi-Oh as some type of invest like only after you have completely used all uh, only after you have completely um maxed out any other asset classes like real estate like your s p 500 like your 401k your employee matching and so on should you really uh look at this right um again it's it's one of these things that you you learn you learn i've learned it. people ask me why don't i make one piece videos why don't i make Disney Locano videos. Why is my all my videos so negative on MetaZoo? Because I have been there with dead card games before that had hype. You know, not like the hype. The 2020 COVID, the hype is just like outrageous, right? But like relatively good hype. I would say, you know, hey, the hype was definitely um, not uh, was. I mean, it's definitely hype. And I just don't see it, right? I, I just didn't see... Uh, these card games being too investable. There are a lot of, you know, and then you have like, Sorcery, uh, Fate, what was it, uh, Flesh and Blood. Um, you have a lot of other very different games out there, and there's so many games, and, and that's what I'm primarily concerned about. There's a lot of games out there, and if you like it and you're just buying it because you like the card game, hey, you know, more power to you, right? 
But if you're thinking that this card game, because of its popularity and its hype and the influencers and so on, can really carry it, that's where you're pretty much wrong. There's not much uh, in this space is recession proof. We had a lot of PPP loans. We're still feeling the effect of inflation due to so much money being printed out. We have a lot of uh, different things, stimulus checks. Uh, and if you think those were a lot of money, you have no idea how much the government actually paid out. They paid out a shit ton of money to basically corporations, tax breaks, and so on. Uh, there's this energy tax break, right? Green energy, if you will. If you ever research it, like, you know, it's kind of crazy how much money they've saved via green energy. And that's why they love green energy. So in the longevity of it, I mean, a lot of these games will end up like MetaZoo. They'll have a player base very similar to Inuyasha TCG, Meta X. Uh, the other game I play, it's um, Meta X, Inuyasha, I forget, oh, Fire Emblem Cypher. There's nothing wrong, and that's why, you know, I'm so, it's so bizarro that the MetaZoo community hates my gut so much, because I'm telling them what their future is. Their future is looking like Fire Emblem Cypher. Their future is Inuyasha TCG. It's a very small niche of people, and it's going to be a very small community of individuals collecting because they like the game. They like the characters. They like the... IP or they like the idea of cryptids. You know, Fire Emblem, I grew up with Fire Emblem, loved the games. So when they had a card game with beautiful artwork, I said, you know what, this sounds amazing, um, let me buy it. I didn't buy it because I, I thought, you know, it was going to be $820 a box. I bought it because I wanted a full set. I wanted to be able to play with the cards, right? And I have a full set of all the Fire Emblem cards. And that was it. And once I completed a full set, to me, job well done. Same with Meta X, same with uh, Inuyasha TCG. That game has been dead for 30 years, you know. That, that game's been dead for 25, 30 years. And if you go on eBay, you rarely see any auctions for these games. But I can tell you that I worked really hard to build my collection. And there's nothing I should be ashamed of, and there's nothing you should be ashamed of. If you enjoy Meta Zoo, build up your collection. And that's great. But understand that, like, because of mismanagement, because of the gameplay, because of something else, right? The game is not going to be as big as you thought it was, and any investment opportunities you had in your head are non-existent. And that's a very, you know, when you're paying $820 for this boost box, and that's what people did pay, not just one person, but tens of thousands of people, or I guess thousands of Rudy fans pay that much money from this box... Why is it so bad to then look on hindsight and say, you know, what did we miss here? What did I miss when I bought this for $820? Or no, uh, whatever this is, right? $825. At one point, this was $10,000. Like, isn't it interesting to actually go over, like, a problem? Like, in law school, they teach you, they teach you via case law, Socratic method. You look at old cases and you see how the plaintiff or defendant lost. And you, you give it new facts and then suddenly, or you give it a new argument and suddenly the plaintiff that lost could win. So that's what I'm doing with MetaZoo. And, you know, it's not, I also collect dead card games. There's no harm in that. <laughs> Guys, 